As an adjunct at a community college in southern New Jersey, I have been teaching for 15 years, first in class, then in hybrid classes, and finally as a full online instructor. Typically, I will have 20 to 25 students per class, which are represented in the demographics shown in these charts. The class I am currently teaching is World Music Cultures, which is an elective that is taken by many freshmen and the occasional adult student who is seeking to complete their degree in a variety of subjects that are not related in any way to music. When constructing the class, I have complete freedom. I'm free to choose my learning theories and design my activities. I keep my supervisor abreast of my teaching experience and we have an open dialogue about implementing new ideas and testing new theories. It is a very comfortable relationship where I feel I can try new ideas with new technologies without fear of administrative interference. When teaching world music cultures, there are several outcomes that need to be accomplished that directly impact the research inquiry. Here are the overall learning outcomes for this class, of which the following are pertinent to my research. Analyze and discuss how different cultures around the world utilize the fundamental musical elements of pitch, rhythm, harmony, texture, and form. Understand the use and influence of music in the social, political, and cultural aspects of daily life, historically and currently. Connect music and musical traditions from around the world with the evolution of music to gain a deeper understanding of all music in the 21st century. And finally, embrace the concept of unity in diversity and the importance of musical culture from a global perspective. Built into the learning outcomes is the need to build empathy and thus begets our problem. The initial assignment given in the first week revealed issues immediately that were, upon first looked, technical and or intellectual. Using a video and audio recording application to record themselves, students clap to the beat of a song of their choice. This is to introduce students to how beats work in a song, where the timing of a song lies, and how to count along with a song. This initial project is imperative to the subsequent projects and assignments as it not only shows that they hear the timing of the music, but can engage in deep listening to get to the core of a song and use what could be new technology for them. The issues that arise are, one, students may choose a song unsuitable for the assignment, i.e. it is too complicated or dense or does not have a consistent beat to lock into. Two, students are not familiar enough with the technology to properly record audio and video in a clear manner. And three, students cannot hear the beat of a song and therefore cannot complete the assignment. These are symptomatic issues, however. It is apparent that there are issues with the engagement of music, even when they are making their own musical choices. The choices students make and the effort they put into the assignment reveals a lack of self-awareness and subconscious programming that controls the emotional response when confronted with listening deeply to music. The choices students make are either beyond their abilities or, as the research revealed, very lackadaisical in their effort. On the surface, students may seem difficult or unwilling to engage with music and new technology, but when presented in a way that allows students to create their own context and understanding, drawing lines from their own background to the material, better outcomes may be possible. I started to break the issues down into two questions I felt would address the initial problem of disinterest. How do we improve music empathy in online learning spaces, thus increasing appreciation and honoring diversity? This aligns perfectly with the learning outcomes. How does technology and equity affect empathy towards the arts in an online environment? So began the data collection. I conducted a survey among students at the beginning of the semester to gauge concepts of self-awareness. The questions were geared toward music listening preferences and tolerance for different music. Students were awarded points for taking the survey. The questions range from an understanding of self, say on a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate yourself in being open-minded, to questions about musical interaction, do you go to see live music? Understanding their levels of engagement and beliefs about themselves leads to clues as to why students reject certain types of music or simply show indifference. Greenberg et al. in an article about creasing musical empathy state, just as musical preferences appear to be, in part, manifestations of personality traits and values, it is reasonable to expect that given the emotionally communicative nature of music, people's preferences may be driven by their empathy levels. 
These varying levels of empathy are likely to impact the types of music that people choose to listen to, not only in the long term, but also in the short term, depending on temporary fluctuations in empathy. The findings of my survey revealed that the majority of students consider themselves open-minded. In the first question, on a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate yourself in being open-minded about listening to new or different music, 8 out of 14 students stated they were a 10 in being open-minded about new music. No student ranked themselves below a 7. It is important to remember these results when reviewing answers to other survey questions as contradictions start to emerge. A poll was also taken. Question number 3 was, when choosing new music, what helps you decide on what you choose? Check as many different reasons as you like. Students largely rely on outside sources to discover music. Tellingly, corporate media is the most popular method of discovering new music. They also rely on already knowing the artist or having friends suggest new music. Keep in mind that each student could choose as many methods as they wished. Question number five, do you go to see live music? How often? What type of music? What type of venue do you usually go to see music? If you don't go to see live music, describe why. 7 out of 14 students stated that they do not usually go to see live music, and many have not seen any shows since before the pandemic. Now, I did not include a question concerning seeing live music pre-pandemic, and I feel that in the future this may be warranted so that we can discern habits post-pandemic. When the three questions are taken into account, it is telling that, although most consider themselves open-minded concerning new music, most get their new music through corporate entities and 50% do not go to see live music. This contradiction reveals that subconscious programming could be a hindrance to building empathy. Due to issues of timing, I had to go back to a previous class to acquire statistics that were not available to me in the current iteration of this class. These statistics are from the Fall 2022 Semester of World Music Cultures. They show another side to the problem of developing empathies that reveals serious information regarding student motivations and interactions. Students have low participation and page views at the beginning of the class, but these numbers spike as we near the end of the class. This shows a tendency for procrastination, which, in turn, is an indicator of a lack of motivation. Self-motivation in developing empathy is crucial, and these graphs show how students are not engaged in the first weeks of the class. Further, an analysis of late and missed assignments reinforces this trend. It is shocking to see how late assignments are being handed in in the very first week of class, up to 20 days on average. The days shrink as we get closer to the end of the semester simply because time is running out and there just are not many days left. Missed assignments are much lower as this reflects a high tolerance by the instructor for allowing students to complete their work even though it is late. Students are simply not engaging with materials at the beginning of class. They are also not aware of their own tendencies when listening to music. It took a while to accept that my initial research proposal was transforming before my eyes and that what I expected to discover had become wholly different. This unexpected realization has forced me to pivot my research to a new third question. How do we initiate self-motivation and self-awareness as a precursor to building greater empathy and acceptance of new music?